Hi guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably already know that a few weeks ago I made a batch of pine tar soap and I liked it so much that I wanted to experiment a little bit more with it. And that's why today I'm making another batch of pine tar soap. I'm gonna do a few changes though. First of all, I'm not gonna be using a whisk like I did last time. I am not going to be using a stick blender. Instead, I'm going to be using just the spoon to mix the soap because one of the problems that I had last time is that my soap got too thick too quickly before I even had a chance to put it into a mold. So I'm really going to try to avoid this today and mixing the soap with a spoon should help me accomplish just that. A second thing that I'm going to change is that I'm going to change the essential oils that will help me to slow down the trace as well and also the essential oils that will make the soap smell a little bit more manly so that my husband could use that one as well. Another change that I'm going to do is that I'm going to change the amounts of coconut oil. I'm going to increase the amount of coconut oil just a little bit and because I'm doing that I'm going to have to decrease the amount of olive oil. I'm doing this because I really like a lot of bubbles in my soap and coconut oil helps you accomplish that. The last thing that I'm going to change is that after I put the soap into the mold, I'm going to keep it on a heating pad for a few hours to speed up the saponification process because I'm going to try to create a very thin trace today and that's why it may take a little longer for the soap to saponify and putting it on top of the heating pad should help me to speed up the process. All right guys, if you're ready, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna mix my essential oils first. Eight grams of cedar wood. And eight grams of orange essential oil. And I'm just gonna set it aside for now. Next, I'm gonna measure 96 grams of water. Forty-seven grams of sodium hydroxide, which is another name for our lye. Now I'm gonna mix the lye into the water, and guys, make sure that that's the order you do it in, and not the other way around. If you ever mix water into lye, it's a safety issue because you will create a little volcano that shoots caustic substance at you and most likely you'll get burns or your burn surfaces around you and you don't want to do that. And I always try to do it slowly and a little bit at a time for the same reason to prevent it from splashing. Now I'm going to measure my oils. 141 grams of coconut oil. 42 grams of pine tar. Technically, pine tar is not an oil, but that's where we mix it. And you can see that I got smarter this time. I'm not touching the pine tar with my hands because it's way too sticky. And I'm just going to microwave it until it all melts. And now when it's fully dissolved, fully melted, we can add the rest of the oil. Which is 150 grams of olive oil. And 18 grams of castor oil. Thank you. 
just gonna stir it to make sure everything mixed in and I'm gonna check the temperature now my thermometer is not an instant read so it takes a little while you can see it moving so it looks like it's uh, a little bit under 100 degrees by Fahrenheit and that's the temperature that I'm looking for here if it's hotter than that then the soap will get too thick too quickly now I'm gonna mix the lye into my oils and I always use a strainer because I've noticed that if your lye is not brand new it doesn't always dissolve 100% and I have this lye for about a year now and I don't want to take any chances of it not dissolving fully and going into my soap and burning my skin when I use it. I'm gonna stir it with a spoon. It automatically feels thicker than the usual soap. I'm already checking for trace. I just don't want to miss it this time. again it looks pretty thick I don't really see the trace quite yet but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and add my essential oils now Now I have to be very careful because even though I pick the essential oils that are not supposed to accelerate the trace too much, they may still accelerate it a little bit. And I'm just gonna continue checking for trace. I don't see the trace yet, but I just want to get the mold ready. Okay, I definitely see the trace now. I'm not sure you guys can see it, but it's there. So I'm gonna pour it into the mold. I'm just so happy that it's thin enough so I can pour it. That was one of my major reasons why I wanted to experiment with pine tar soap again. See if I can achieve this thin trace. And it's perfect. Just gonna tap it a little, make sure that there are no bubbles. And I'm gonna cover it. And I'm gonna put it on top of the heating pad. Turn the heating pad on, obviously. I think I want to insulate it a little bit more, so I'm going to put something on top of it. And since my heating pad is so big, I'm just going to kind of wrap my soap in it. Alright, it's 26 hours later. I kept the soap on a heating pad for 3 hours and the rest of the time it was just sitting insulated on top of it. Looks like I moved the mold not very carefully and the soap got raised and got thickened this way. Oh well, we'll fix it. Well, let's do the pH test. So these are the strips that I 
buy on eBay. I'm gonna tear one of them out, soak my finger in distilled water and moist the soap and then apply the strip. Wow, this is a little too dry, let's do it again. And it came to green color, now I'm just comparing it to the chart. Looks like it came to between 8 and 9, closer to 8, which is perfect. Let's just take it out of the mold. It's safe to use now. Looks pretty smooth. Doesn't look like it sticks to the mold, but the mold is very thick, so it's not as easy to take it out. The soap still feels kind of soft. Yeah, it looks like I damaged it a little bit. That's okay. Just gonna go ahead and cut it. This is always the most exciting part, cutting the soap. And here I'm just trying to make the pieces even. The soap is still very soft, so it's gonna be easy to cut it. Let's just cut this weird sticking out piece off to make our soap look pretty. And here we go, we got three beautiful pine tar soaps. Let's uh, do a leather test. Well, I don't see any more bubbles than in my previous batch, so I guess I didn't really have to change the amount of coconut oil. It's a nice rich leather with nice big bubbles but it feels creamy at the same time. Awesome, just the way I like it. I'm really excited about this soap today. It smells, it smells nice. It smells, I think the cedar wood adds a little bit of outdoorsy smell to it and their orange adds some uh, citrusy, fresh smell to it. And I think it's a good soap for men or women actually. I think I'm gonna like that one as well. Um, you can use it for your hands or your face or the whole body. I, I've been using my pine tar soaps on my face every day and I love it. I think this is like the most moisturizing bar of soap that I've ever had made so far. And um, guys, it's safe to use the soap right away, but it's still kind of a little bit soft. So I think I'm going to cure it for three to four weeks. You know, it's because it was a thinner trace, it takes longer for it to harden. And you know, if you cure it for a few weeks, the water will evaporate and the bar of soap will become harder and it will last you longer. All right, well guys, that is all for today. I thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you like to see more of my videos, subscribe to my channel. I hope you're doing well, staying well, and I hope to see you next time.